Hey, what is up everybody and welcome back to a much darker version of myself. I took a half hour. I went and got myself a drink. I chilled. I I rang my family. I asked them how they were. I, I got back in touch with people I hadn't spoke to in ages. Because you never know what's around the corner these days. I figured that out. Um, it can go from sunshines and rainbows, or in their case, touching the tree of names, to a giant explosion that killed two people. Possibly two people. I don't. I, I still don't know if Xerxes is actually dead yet, but possibly two people. I mean, he had his face ripped off. All right, that's not. It's, you can't. That's not normal, right? I don't care where you're from. Getting your face ripped off ain't normal. Whether he survives it or not. Or they find a way to make him survive. I have no idea. Um, I, I I put my hood up. I joined the dark side. We're going to watch it. It's going to be fun. Probably not. Because... <laughs> oh god, that last episode, man. Oh, it was so bad. Jeez, I mean, it was bad in a good way. Like, the episode was great. Uh, in Well, the first hour of the episode. It was fantastic. And I loved it. And I thought the action and the fact that everything that happened happened in a singular second uh, it was really cool I like the way they did that uh, but 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 the, the context of the stuff that happened within that one second no I don't like that no no I don't like that at all as I mentioned in the the last episode that we watched um I just wish I could go back to the first episode and just not have to live in this world that we're now in. Even though I know, well, I'll watch it again, and eventually I've got to get back up to this point. Like, when I watch a, a series I've already watched, and I know full well, I, I'm going to cry. Because I know what's about to happen. It happens all the time. If anyone's ever seen the anime um, Assassination Classroom, that shit gets to me all the time. I don't want to spoil it in case anybody wants to watch it. I would highly recommend it. It's really cool if you're in anime and you haven't watched it yet. would 100% would recommend it. But, um... Just prepare yourself, all right? Have some tissues at the ready, because holy shit, every time I watch that, it gets to me so bad, and I don't like it. And this is that. Th this is now a part of that 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 whole spectrum. I don't... Fuck it. We're just going to get into it, all right? Fuck you, Brennan. That's all I have to say, all right? <laughs> Let's go. It's like a YouTuber apology video. <laughs> I've got to get myself prepared. All right. Yeah. You see the reaction when people get their faces ripped off, I'm sure. You do have three hit points. Maybe you'll maybe you'll survive this. Uh why don't come up to this side of the table? Kill one of them. Um you must be so scared, Nidus. You see Sarah's at 7 Eleven. Um I got I think I got exact change. Give me give me an insight check if you would be so cool. Do I do I have a moment to do anything? You have a moment to do anything. Then I'm gonna cast a spell. What do you cast? I'm gonna cast Resilient Sphere on myself. Cool. Um he will that help it with a ninth level spell slot and um Brennan! You fucking ass, man. And smashes Chill, you dude. the floor and breaks your spine. Um, uh, and he he heals he heals you again. And wait, you're kidding me, right? So this guy is. I I mean, I'm going to assume gods of that level don't really have spell slots. I don't think. I don't know how NPC characters work, uh, but it. it if a god as powerful as essentially Asmodeus um, can just whip out ninth level spells and is just like, no. Boop, boop. This is, again, sorry, going back to anime. But if anyone's ever watched um, The Misfit of Demon King Academy, the first episode, Anos, who's the Demon King who's been reincarnated 2,000 years into the future, uh, kills this guy. This guy steps up to him. He's a part of the royal family, you know, and he walks up to him and. Uh, he's, he's given it the big in, you know, he's part of the royal family, or a royal family, and he thinks Anos is below him. Nobody knows who Anos is, he was born to, like, just a common, common appearance, you know? Uh, so Anos shows him what's what, and he's like, 
because the guy's giving it the big and going, even if I die, even if you kill me, I'll never concede, so you'll never win. He's like, huh, is that so? And just clicks his fingers, destroys the guy, dude explodes into a fucking puddle of red gunk, and then, he, I can't remember what the spell's called, but it's essentially resurrection, and he just, boom, resurrects him. Guy's freaking out, he's like, yeah, don't worry, as long as I resurrect you within three seconds, um, you're good. And then just continues to kill him over and over and over again until the guy, it, he does eventually concede and, you know, <laughs> rightfully so, he's just been killed about 12 times. But this just reminds me of that. If he can just blast off ninth level spells like that, that is so fucked up, dude. That is so messed up. He, he breaks your spine, heals you, raises you back up, casts time stop again. I just want to remind everybody. Okay, really quick, please. <laughs> yeah. What I, I get in between the time stops, buddy? Just, just let a girl know, like, yeah. No, no, he casts the second time stop in the first time stop. Oh, of course, yeah, because why the fuck not? There is no second for you guys to recuperate. This man is a god. He's yeah. We're getting incepted right now. Time stop within Whoa. a time stop. I fully hear you. Uh, he, <laughs> he brings you, he brings you back. You see, he said, he said, <laughs> in the vision in the hall of prophecy you told me that you would help me confront those who did this to me wake up Xerxes you did this to me you Come and your kids such an intense moment man are the prime deities those are my siblings we were so yeah so even though they you know defeated him and the rest of the betrayer gods and the, the primordials and stuff like that, and banish them, he's still not angry at them. He, he still just hates humanity. The thing that, that was the whole thing, right? It was the fact that the betrayer gods thought the fact that the, the humans and all, all the like, mortal creatures were getting magic, and they were, the, 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 the prime deities were giving them all this stuff that they thought they shouldn't have and wanted to take all that back. So, yeah, even after all this time, even after being banished by them, he still harbors no hatred towards them and only still <laughs> hates humanity. I mean, he's got conviction. I'll give him that. A big amount of it. We're happy once together. We traveled here together. And then As you came along. On you, but before the schism, all was well between us. So that's why he we blames humanity. To make something. And then, one of our puppets, one of our foolish paper dolls, mattered so much to them that they threw us into the pit. You think that my quarrel is with them? No, 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 no. All of you did something to them. You made them turn their back on us. My greatest heartbreak is that when I have collected every last mortal soul and all of my siblings into my pit, that I will only have eternity to punish them. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, okay. So I can die as many times as possible and Tempest is still out there. Mm -hmm. And my telepathic link to Tempest remains. Yes. Go to As this is happening. Serret? I'm just basically transferring all of this with some instructions to Tempest. Mm -hmm. Um. Wait. For sure, we said You're right. You're right. Yeah, you don't got lips no more. Can I? I mean, can I? Is it? Because did he heal me to just rip my face off again? He, Possibly. Uh, you, I mean, this it's is an option. his vision. Yeah. Endless torment without death. This is what he is here to do. Cool. That sounds like cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not that bad what you get used to. <laughs> no one Flintstones dinosaur my, my oh, I love that. It's living. Um, uh, <laughs> We're left because it's so dark. 
It is so dumb. It's not even happening to you. It's happening to me right now. I know. Yeah, but all those guys are just watching you be ripped apart and healed all over again. Yes. Dead and alive. I. Dean got tortured in hell for 40 years before he jumped off the wreck. So I'm sure he. I'm sure Xerxes has some. You feel that leap. Determination, you know. Give me an resilience if you can. Oh my. God. I thought the other sessions were going to give me nightmares. 21. Um, you look into his eyes and you see... Love at first sight. <laughs> you see... It was so easy for him. And what you see is you have fought abominations and undead before. You have fought things that are of an alien need for destruction, cold, unfeeling, things that are anathema to life itself, and this is not the Lord of Hells. There is an infinite hatred behind his eyes, purer than anything you can imagine. Perhaps at one point he wore a golden face. That's long gone. And behind his eyes when they were of gold, this hatred lived. And you see in him that unlike the, the alien aberration or undead hatreds you have faced in the past, this is not beyond. It is something that each human has the gift of because he doesn't just hate you, he hates everybody. Yeah, he does. He doesn't hate them in an alien way. He wants them to know that they deserve it. I process all of that, and you just see pity. Uh, he goes mad as you as pity. Oh, your good face, God, no! He looks at you and goes. It's gonna explode you again. Everything so purely. Oh, you exactly, but there, like you just said, there is a purity in that. I know you're a redemption paladin. You're you literally even the father of lies, the, the the god that you know everybody knows is just pure hatred for specifically mortals. It would seem. Um, he's even trying to see the good in him, even after the dude's just ripped off his face, broke his spine, done. God knows what else to him. He still pities him. He still pities him, and it's absolutely nuts. Like, again, like his his resilience in himself and his belief in himself that everybody can be redeemed is admirable. But uh, th there's got to be a point where you're just like, look, there's nothing to be done. Like, just try and kill him. Escape somehow. I don't know how the hell he would, but try and escape. Find the prime deities because they they are still roaming around on Earth, right? Because this is before, because this leads up to the events that you know keeps them away from mortals and protects them. So just try and kill him. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that'll go any better than trying to redeem him. But you poor thing. Look at how much you hate yourself. Sam's face is like everybody's face right now, just like you waiting for something to happen. Fault is Xerxes. Other than just being very trusting. You truly believe that you are above this all, this city that you will not call home. Me, the gods. But I'm not the one who left my little son oh. down in that city for all of my devils to find. That's... So I think you are going to make a very good champion for me. Uh, and he uh, twists your head around, uh, snaps your neck. You have died for the third time in, uh. Uh, in less than that many minutes. And he drops you to the ground. Um, He's going to resurrect him as like a... You feel your spirit being released f from your mortal body uh -huh. 
Um, and you see the Lord of Hells existing in this sort of liminal space goes, sorry about your sword. I tend to have that effect. But the fact that you this is like the Lich King from World of Warcraft, I swear to God. Doesn't spoil anything for me because I think that you are my greatest champion, Xerxes. So, if you'd like to be back in the world, you see he grabs Zartaza the Erinus by the throat. She goes, oh. thank you. And he smashes her into the ground and you see a ruby-headed, black iron-encrusted mace crunch as she explodes in blood, and there is armor everywhere. The top of the mace almost like a black crown. Uh, the ruby glows with infernal fire in the head of the mace, and it rests there in this liminal space. That's there for you to pick up if you want. Xerxes, but you know the cost you pay for it. But I won't force you. The afterlife awaits. <coughs> I, <tried to> <laughs> <laughs> um, I inhaled the water out of shock. Um, <laughs> I was trying to keep mace? it down. I appreciate the extra huh? tens of <laughs> The mace of the Black Crown. Oh. My God! Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's the, thing. the mace of the black crown. So, is this kind of like the the armor that uh, Vax has? Or, well, in this case, it would be the I can't remember what the guy's called the other matron of Ravens champion. Uh, the the armor that lets him like speed around and stuff like that. The mace of the black crown, I assume, is his version of like a champion, a piece of a champion equipment. I guess you would call it. It's not necessarily armor. Obviously, this is a weapon. Uh, I go, uh, is it my spirit or my body that has agency right now? Uh, it is now your spirit that has agency. Um, you see that the Lord of Hell, the Lord of, uh, the Lord of the Hells is, is exiting. Uh, he leaves this infernal mace in front of your spirit. You feel in a liminal, you feel the, the pull of the afterlife. Your, your dead body has let your spirit go, but there is this gleaming, infernal artifact before you. Okay. Oh my god. So he has two choices. So it's either, so I, I'm sorry if I keep pausing it, but it's, it's either you die, uh, which is probably not ideal for the rest of the people of the world at this point, um, or you take the artifact, and I'm going to assume that either it makes him loyal to the Lord of Hells, or turns him, like, corrupts him in some sort of way. I'm going to assume. But knowing Xerxes, he's probably going to try and wield it anyways and purify it and try and redeem the weapon like he tried to redeem the Lord of Hells. I'm sweating. Probably it's too many so things. Much. Yes. Can... So it's my spirit that has the agency, my body is just crumpled on the floor. Yes, correct. <laughs> I reach out and I try to um, grab uh, the name stone. Can I? Can I? Can I ha touch and grab anything? The name stone. Its spirit is with you too, and it rests on your chest. Yours and Evandrin's. Both of our name stones are on my chest. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you touch Evandrin's name stone? Yes. You hear in your heart. Darling, no. And we will move from there. Oh, oh come on, man! Brennan, real, real talk. Did we? Did we do? Brennan, one second of actual time in that space. I don't uh, think we get a second. It feels um, like we need to give it to Brennan. Did we honestly do one second of actual time? Okay, We're now, zero, now, zero now that we come back. Go! One second! You one second, baby. Yeah. Oh, baby! Two PCs in less than one but, second. Yes. That might be a record. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gary? Gary Gygax? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, 
I want you to know, <laughs> a DM oh just set God. the record for most PC death in under one minute. Um, oh. Well, so I'm only one, there's only one of you dead. Well, okay. I'm, I'm clear. Yeah, I was gonna say, technically one's I know, does that kind of dead. PC? Yeah. His mortal form um, has died, but his spirit lives on, I think. You got marionetted, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. That was nasty, dog. <laughs> so are we are we going over to Serret now and see what he's all about? Yeah. See what he's doing. Um. Hey, episode four of Calamity. Hell yeah, baby. Hell yeah, baby. Just straight up like. Give us damage, and then be like, he's here, and he's go wave to us, and then he leaves, and then we're gonna yeah. move on. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. I don't know what to say. Uh, 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 I don't know what to say. Uh, that crown. Uh, uh, it's a. Uh, it's a whole ass badass thing. Yeah. Artifact. It's one of the yeah. arms of the betrayers. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Arms of the betrayers. Um, it's so we, uh, we go to... Um, you may remove uh, uh, your Holy Avenger and add the Mace of the Black Crown to your inventory. If you, uh, if you so to... choose, if you choose to accept, I'll, and maybe I'll not yet. Still, you know, I don't know. Uh, uh, do I just die? They've only written books about it, so you know, just think yeah. uh, uh, Cool. Um, so are we not going over to Sarah? I think uh, you just giving them a minute <laughs> to process um, so... <laughs> everything that's just happened in the past Ooh, hour. Ooh, boy oh boy. Um, <laughs> Is that her tail? <laughs> mm. Damn. Um, we return, uh, uh, two of you are making death saves. Oh, also, um... Holy shit, I've just brain farted. <laughs> I literally just completely forgot what I was about to say. Um, and, uh, Laren, you... My God. How many hit points do you have right now? 22. 22. 22. Um, Laren, you hit the wall and drop. You may act at any time, but you also are aware as you hit the wall that time has returned so boom, boom um nidus quay and patia all hit the wall uh xerxes does as well um yeah his I, lifeless I, corpse you know, you with a twisted head to see who's dead and who's hits the wall i see four Bodies. effective corps, corpses how far away is quay um from me wow. you got blown back through the door so i think you're probably like 40 feet back from him from quay and then there's another probably like 30 feet to the center of the chamber, where you see, uh, it's hard to look at him. First of all, there's heat waves all around him, like on a hot day, but he's also just impossible to behold. But you see something that your mind registers as a figure cloaked in red, uh, about 12 feet tall, looking down at Vespin, um, and you see the Lord of the Hells speaking to Vespin Chloris, and, and you can hear what he is saying in this moment, but um, seventy feet away. Seventy feet away, yes. And I know how far counter spell works. Mm -hmm. Meters too far, and they're all bodies. I dimension door away. You dimension door away. Uh, seventy Let's feet go. is. You're beyond. already dead. Yeah. Let's go. You're already dead. You're leaving me. You're already dead. Okay. Just like always. So. Oh. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, you guilt tripper, Sam. You dimension door away. <laughs> as you do, um, as you dimension door to it, like a secret private sanctum that you know about, um, you uh, see a screen, uh, a light in the room that you are in, from prone on the floor, being kind of glitching and staticking, is a feed from Dwyoma whose body Ooh. is like on the ground. She might still be partially active, but she is just sort of like flat and still on the ground, showing you an image of what is happening in that room. Um, you hear them talking. Um, do you speak Infernal? Uh, no. Um, okay, copy I that. I have tongues. You have tongues? Yeah. <laughs> do you want to cast tongues? I got multiple tongues. They <laughs> do. Cool. I'm out of third level spells. I'm running out of everything. <laughs> you cast tongues. Um, you see the uh, Lord of the Hells looking down at Vespin Chloris and saying, uh, Hollow, friend, Lightbreaker, Cormorant. Get them all in position. 
<laughs> Vespin sort of crouches and squeals, and you see that Lord of the Hells smashes him in the face with a hand, and he scatters oh. to the ground and says, Oh, dead? Well, mortals are as disappointing as ever, I suppose. Have the Kanathi all activated their runes? Very good. Um, and you see that he is surrounded by motes of fire for a second, and you see images of Kanauthi all around the city in hiding with those sort of like runes that were ceremonially cut with blood. Lord of the Hells touches his forehead and all of those runes <laughs> light. The Kanauthi begin to burn and immolate, and from their burning chests, full devils begin to crawl into the world. Oh my all God. Over Avalir. I had a feeling this was going to happen when he mentioned devils to, uh, to Xerxes about his son being around. Uh, yeah, that's not good. I, I don't know how powerful devils are in d and i I'm, I'm going to assume pretty goddamn freaking strong, because uh, most things are. Most things are, especially when something like the Lord of Hell is, is basically summoning you. Uh, yeah. I really don't know how this is going to go. The reason I ran. I really don't know. The have telepathic bond is still up. Yeah. And I am just live feeding this to the last person that's still up and can do something about this. Sarah. So you know everything we know now. Um, I'm going to ask for death. <laughs> what the fuck do I do? <laughs> from Loquacious and Nidus. How many? Well, you have one failed one. So you're just going to give me one for right now. We're going to bend time a little bit here. That's a six. That's your second uh, fail. Okay. You know, I'm all big dog. Yeah. Natural 20. Back one. Yeah, back, pop back, back, back up. Pop back, back up. Come on. Come on. Manifest. Manifest. Uh, oh God, that is a 16. Okay. Success and failure for Nidus. Um, success and failure? One success and failure. Right. Right. Um, you see. <laughs> um, Oh. Uh, this is crazy. Yeah. Uh, this entire episode's been crazy. Like, I, I, you see? I keep forgetting uh, I'm that, even making a YouTube video. Uh, the Lord of Hell's uh, Vespin um, looks and sort of looks up and snarls something up at the Lord of the Hell's, um, and you see the Lord of the Hell's goes. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me that the God of death is a mortal. <laughs> I hate to say I told you so! Uh, and you see Vespin sort of shrinks away from that. Uh, and you see, he says, well, I cannot wait to meet this matron of ravens. <laughs> to think if they just listen to us and not given magic to them, my sibling whose name I can no longer remember might still be here. Uh, oh. Oh, so it even affects the gods as well. So obviously when they they took like he took the position of the matron of ravens and it obviously eradicated all information about the past one. I don't know if it would affect the gods as well, considering like you said that's that was his sister pretty much. So yeah, it it seems that he did. Just freaking nuts. Uh, Nuts, dude. You see that um, he then moves forward and says, um, Vespin, you know what you must do. I do not. Prepare the gateway for the emperor and empress. They must join us before sunrise in Vasselheim. Uh, he said, uh, uh, you see Vespin goes, <laughs> And the Lord of the Hell says, the primordials can handle Avalir. My business takes me to Vasselheim tonight. Uh, he smiles. That's never a good sign. Never a good sign. Opens the door and says, the Emperor and Empress, get it done, Vespin. Uh, opens the door and you see, for the first time, the towers of Gordranis newly built by the powers of betrayers. He walks through and you see the second form of a hulking betrayer. Uh, the Lord of the Hells 
steps through this gate and goes, Brother! <laughs> Great ruiner. If you're not busy, I was thinking we might go and destroy the Dawn City together. Yeah. That I sound mean, like a good time. I've been doing world, much for the past couple of thousand years, dude. Behind him, and he says, I have some interesting help from some old allies of ours. Uh, and the door closes. Um, uh, so. <laughs> what are you talking about? I feel like we're in Cloverfield. <laughs> just, yeah. Fuck. No, like, just, we got a camera. Yeah. like, cool. Uh, uh, hey, um, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, uh, I will ask. They well and truly are fucked up. I, I, that saves from loquacious. You, and, you know, he has two two failures. Yeah. Can I inspire myself? <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Give him a little, give him a little look. Yeah. Yeah, just a wink. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> My wife will be right here to get us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, last couple of seconds. Oh. I saw that guy tell us Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Easy peasy, buddy. Come on. Another six. Oh. oh six, six, six. Oh, shut up! Uh, no fucking uh, uh, in lacerations. Oh, uh, he's gonna die as well. Fuck. Can I just for flair? Yeah. His son of a dick. Body continues to morph and change, and his na his nakedness. Uh, his penis just changes shape into all kinds of different animals. Of course. It becomes a duck penis for a second. Oh, no. It becomes sure, a cow sure. penis. Just oh, crazy, oh, just crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking poor Nidus is lying there, like, watching his friend bleed out, like, uh, Nidus, I I'm not gonna make it. And he looks over, he's like, this is it, my friend. Goodbye. And as he fades away, slowly the light leaves his eyes as his fucking dick turns into a horse cock. And just starts flopping around. <laughs> like, come on, man! Like, how like how does Nidus? Do you laugh? Do you cry? Do you do a bit of both? I, I what the fuck? I want to sully this. Right? Just, I want to sully this whole image of that you. Oh man! With a bunch of dicks. With a bunch yeah. of dicks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to What did Nidus get? Oh, we're finding out right now. Come on, brother. Natural twenty. Yeah. Natural twenty, baby. It's fifteen. Two successes, one failure. For our, I know that I know that we have seen a lot of conversation. I just want to say, for our purposes, this is the second round. Even though there's been conversation, lots of stuff happening. Time is a little wibbly wobbly here. This is the second round since everything happened. Um, we are going to. Um, hey, Brandon, do I know? So there's two dead. One. That he's gone. Na. <laughs> Death isn't applicable to this guy, apparently. Did you let that? Hey, did that stone that you gave me happen to have any sort of spell in, in it? It was, <laughs> it was spell energy. Could it have given him advantage or something? No, no. <laughs> Would you know what? Had you not left, um, as, as yeah. He fades away, this the, is the true betrayal. The, last, yeah, right, exactly. the true betrayal. Maybe you could have saved him. <laughs> the, the, last, the last phallic shape that you see looks exactly like Brennan. <laughs> 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 I, I love that. Really, I just conform to the genre. Um, uh, Nidus like, who the fuck is that? Why is your dick shaped like a man? Um, oh. We move. Uh, uh, Towards, Don't come over here. Uh, we move, no, we move to you flying over the city as the revel, it is now about 4 a.m. Even the lot of shit just happened in one night, it, bearing in mind. Of explosions and screams that begins through the city. You fly and begin but to technically, see this would probably be the second night starting in various neighborhoods. If it's 4 a.m., um, people are one are day, 24 scream. hours. You fly uh, over Excelsior Plaza and see people rushing to a porter's dais, a teleportation dais. You see a porter, as people start screaming, seeing 
devils charging around a corner. You see a porter in uniform saying, everyone, everyone, don't clear, do not crowd the platform. Do not crowd the platform. Uh, you see oh God, it's a, just gonna run through uh, them. A terrified wizard uh, uh, or see a terrified spellcaster uh, cast command on the porter and say, get us out of here. And you see all of them vivisected as the teleportation has too many people, blood all over the dais. Boom. Okay, never mind. The devil didn't even get to them. <sighs> I'm trying to process this episode, man. Oh my holy Holy shit! Um There's blood and guts and viscera everywhere. Um uh, devils attacking burning Kanalthi corpses with open doorways in their chests as devils crawl out. Um, Real quick, people in the past, like in the 80s and stuff like that, when D&D &D wasn't exactly as widely accepted as it is right now, uh, and, you know, people used to think that people who played D&D &D were, were, were worshipping the devil, and they were cultists, and I always wondered, why would people think that? And then I, and then I see this, and I'm like, you know what it is? They they have a point when you know as I said it's not as why it was never as widely accepted back then uh, and if you walked in on your son who is you know not live streaming to thousands of people in you know it's a big thing and he's a, this super you know famous guy who everybody knows and he's just talking to his friends in 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 his mother's basement and you hear him go yeah you know, as you're walking down the stairs to do your laundry he's just like oh yes and. uh a bunch of people are trying to get into the, the teleportation DS, and yeah, there's too many people in as the wizard commands the uh, the porter to to try and teleport too many people, they just split into a red mist, viscera everywhere, guts flown all over the streets. A child stands there as it, its mother's guts just splatter into his face. The 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 shockwave narrowly missing him. As blood is everywhere, the child tries to run, slips on the blood, and cries into the night. All right, we'll carry this on next Thursday. And then, you know, his mother's just fucking terrified, ringing up the fucking news agents like, holy shit, my son is possessed by the devil. <laughs> you gotta get a priest down here now. Yeah, I can see why. I can see why now. You are headed towards a neighborhood that seemed to have less of this going, your, your home off in a different neighborhood. Um, uh, you see sky ships off in the harbors, um, but for right now, the chaos you see is mostly in Excelsior Plaza, where the most awake people were. But for the vast bulk of the city, just some fires are breaking out, and you know that it will be a long time, that, that people have no way of knowing what is happening. Um, yeah, sorry, you need to, like, you find a way to tell the people. Uh, Actually, probably not. That'll just ensue you can. panic even more, I guess. Towards Cloudstown, yes. Or, or uh, yeah, off towards your home, exactly. Um, uh, you see that the sky, you, normally you're, uh, you know, one of few, a few Aisura who are flying. You see multiple flying mages escaping from one thing or another um, begin to sort of fly by. There's one mage that's levitating in midair, his face covered with blood, just looking stunned, unsure of what has happened. Uh, is he about to die as well? And a light on the balcony uh, moving into your home. And for the first time, we see them, Maya and Kier, <gasps> standing in front of you. God, your children are home. Um, Fuck! Don't tell me something's gonna happen. Maya looks up at you, your daughter, who is a young teenager, got a little bit of awkward plumage molt, like teenager molt around uh, her neck. Uh, uh, shout out to Sunny. Uh, you see that um, she looks and she goes. Dad, Dad, I wasn't drinking. Or I just like so another kid saw it at the party. I didn't like. I didn't know that there was anything. I know, honey. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. I, I did. I didn't see. I didn't see any of this coming. Are you okay? Are you hurt? Um. Well, we were doing. Where's your brother? Um. Uh. Up in the rafters, hiding. You see your son with holding his little thing. Says. Oh, Copy. I'm here. Here, please come down here. A light's down. Hey, Dad. Okay, 
I, I, I look out the windows behind them. I just do a quick like 180 sweep as fast as I can. Like, is there anything perched, any danger, anything following them? Is this room clear for the next 30 seconds? In a possession check. Oh God, come on, please don't let anything happen to the kids. 23. Um, <sighs> you do not detect any invisible presences. To your knowledge, it is safe. Uh, to your knowledge. Distant noises. You're rattled, you're not working on a baseline. No. Um, uh, you see, it has not gotten to the point yet where Kier and Maya, they, the screams they're hearing could just be 4 a.m. night of the replenish. It's it's hard. It's like, is that someone being crazy and drunk outside or is that something else? Um, uh, so both of your children look at you and Maya says, Dad, what's wrong? I'm gonna tell you all about this at some point. I promise. That point is not right now. Incredible story, but right now, I have a su surprise for the both of you. As you say that, you see that Kier looks down, as does Maya. Maya points to your hand and says, Dad, why is your ring glowing? Oh, they know he's lying. Oh, man. <laughs> it glows when danger is near. Okay. Which means that you need to get out of here. I have a special gift. And I take out the two the the runes of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is for the each of you. It's going to take you to your mother. Wait, uh, uh, the ring is for lying, right? I'm, I'm fairly certain that's what it was. She's very excited to see you. But I need you to listen to me. Whatever you do, don't come back until I find you. Stay away from the city. Dad, why are you talking like this? Is Maya, everything it's okay? It's very important that you listen to me. Yes, it's okay, but I need you to listen very carefully. It's up to you to take care of you and your brother. Do you, do you understand? Well, you see, Kira says, but if the city's not safe, what about my friends at school? And, and wait, we had a... And you see, Kira, Kira, Maya says, Dad, why are you talking like this? Like, we're going to come I back to... I understand. I, I take her hand. I open it. Kira, come here. I open his hand as well. I love the both of you so much. So much. Dad. I take the stones, I close their hands. Oh, it hurts. You see, they look with those stones in their hand. All that they need to do is break those stones in their hand and it, the spell will take effect. You see that Myla looks up and says, Dad. And you see Kier starts crying and goes, Dad, did I do something wrong? Oh. oh baby, I'll always have my eye on you. And I squeeze their hands. Oh. And both of them vanish as you see Maya goes, wait! Fuck you, Brennan. And they're gone. Making me feel things and shit. Um, the ring slowly stops glowing. They're out of the city. And you stand in the home you built with rain. It's so quiet, and it hasn't been quiet in years. You look at your ring and the emblem of the eyes of Abelir. Looking at this home and all the noise that would be here with young kids growing up. I think it occurs to you how much time this ring took from being in this home. Because there may never be the sounds of home and hearth, life and laughter in this place again. 
Give me an insight check, if you would be so kind. Everyone's a goddamn mess! Look at them! Uh. <laughs> Sarah looks at the symbol <laughs> of the eye of Avalir on his ring. The eye is sculpted to look down, ever watchful, the eyes of a city in the clouds. On a 26 insight, you found many threats to the city of Avalir. Long years of being exceptional, perceptive, intelligent, clever. Your eyes ever peering down. Cultists and criminals, even some magisters some corrupt officials, but on a 26 insight, often ones without friends or connections. The eyes of Avalir never looked up. And the price you paid was that here at the end of things, you still don't get to hear the laughter of your children in this home as was the case so many long nights of devotion and service. Where does Sarah go in his mind? Sorry, I don't want to pause it on this uh, very emotional part of the story. Thank you for that, Brennan. Uh, means a lot, homie. Thank you. But I was just curious. I, I don't think it was ever brought up, although I'm not 100% sure. Maybe he just passed away or something. But Whatever happened to Sarah's like, wife? I assume he had one. Obviously, he's got kids. So, unless, you know, I can't remember the name of his race, the Aracocra, but like the their version of it or whatever. Uh, unless he can freaking lay eggs himself. I, I have no idea how it works, but I assume he had a wife at some point. What, what, what happened to them? Oh, them. <laughs> what happened to her? In this moment. And what does he do? Sarah slowly takes the ring off of his finger and almost absent-mindedly starts to walk to his home office just down the hallway, pushes the door open. And as you'd probably imagine, it's a wreck. Papers, pictures, drawings, cups, dishes, the remnants of all of his work, of his obsession, of his craft, of his eye. watches it just dance up. He's taking out his own house. Move up. He'd be the one to do it rather than to be destroyed by you. devils and creatures of the Step night. Back out into the hallway. You are perhaps unparalleled in all the world at discerning fact from fiction and from spotting lies. And the last lie you told was to get your children out of here. And outside your office, you see a small little indentation in the wall, a little discolored patch where young kids would come and get their little food-stained hands up on the wall and press their head against the door to see if they could hear what you were working on. Hmm. See that? Even as I start to hear the familiar sounds of flame, 
I head over to their rooms. I open the threshold and just stand. And I take in how long it's been since I just looked, really looked, here. Not outside of this dwelling, but here. You're a great dad, Serret. You're brilliant detective. I just want you to know that. Looks at a room. Absent father or not. To piece together stories. You love them. Tiny fractions. And you love the city. From the turn of a corner of a notebook on Maya's desk, you see that she has an incredible talent for history. Otherwise, why would she have gotten so far ahead in that chapter book? You look and see under Kier's bed the telltale carpet throw of a child hiding some kind of toy weapon or something <laughs> that he shouldn't have and see from the shape of it that they are small oh, boxes. Just like his. And here in this moment you put all of your vast intellect to work <laughs> so that as the flames begin to lick the wall behind you, you solve the mystery of who your children were. Yeah, that's just not cool. <laughs> oh God, it's hidden deep. But true. As it burns behind me, I think of where I've come from, a family devoted to this city. I think of where my family has gone. And I let all of it die. Is this what other D&D campaigns are like? Are they going to hit me with emotions like this? Or? For now. Is this what Matt's because like as a DM as well? You make me feel? For what comes next. comes next. I think back to that one second blurb where every letter of the alphabet was thrown together and just a torrent of sound and horribleness. Laren communicated and relayed everything that she saw. In this moment, you hear that here. Do I know where she is because of that? Yes. You're gonna go to her? Where is she? In the Meridian Labyrinth, in a secret compartment, a viewing station that you would know your direct way to. There is a path for you to get there safely. I steal myself, and as supersonic as I can, make for the Meridian Laboratory. <sighs> like a bolt. You leave your burning home behind. We, uh, I'm going to ask for. Oh my God! Let's save here. You have two successes and one failure. Natural twenty. Come on, baby. It was almost natural twenty, but it is a twelve. Okay. That's a third success. You are stable. Nidus is stable on the ground. Um, Does that mean one hit point? No, is that still at zero? Still at zero. Um, what I'm wondering is, is how are they actually going to get to Nidus? Because Laren assumed they were all dead, obviously getting blasted out of the room, and just immediately they mentioned all the way. So she, as far as she's concerned, they're all dead. And... Obviously, Serret only knows what Lara knows at the minute because she relayed that information. So they both don't know. And I don't think, because I'm fairly certain it was Patia and maybe it was one of the magical um, items that got destroyed or whatever. But I don't think the, the psychic link is still up for him to even... Because I'm, I'm fairly certain he's still unconscious at the moment. Yeah, unconscious, just not dying. Okay. So he's unconscious, so he couldn't even relay you know, the fact that he's still alive anyways. 
So how the hell, unless they go there on pure happen chance of wanting to know if anything's been left, how are they going to save him? How How is he going to get out of this? I, I just, I simply don't know. Uh, There's a lot going on, man. There's a lot going on. Um, okay. Uh, Poor girl, man. We um, are going to... What is that, like 36 seconds? Um, we return to the Astro. It's around 12 seconds, um, roughly. We come back That what's supposed to be. Um, uh, you are... in a sea of silvery mist and beyond them stars. And you see Tempest approaching for a moment, but then you see it, it's not, it's not Tempest. It is a body composed of starlight, amethyst, liquid glass. It's pretty cool. The visual, anyways, mist. in my mind. You see the Vandran. He reaches. Don't touch me. I have waited so long to do only that. I can't bear it if you were to touch me right now. Xerxes. What have I done? You. Done only what you thought was right. You believed. And that is not a fault. That is not a fault. I. stars and the moon and life itself <sighs> are you in this place because Laren has sent you here no no not I quite don't know how I... no Laren didn't or maybe she did she sundered the tree do you know what happened the tree yes Yes. Do you know what came through the tree? Yes, I do. Um, I missed you. And he leaps at you. Ah. Uh, uh, um, he. God. Embraces you and holds you close. I hold him back. Um, he goes, I, I did not. It is too much to bear that I have waited here in between these places for seven years to see you for but a moment before I lose you. I don't want to lose you. You will never lose me. <sighs> never. Uh, uh, I take off um, my name stone and I give it to him holds it, puts it around his neck. He looks and says, I, I, I know that time is of the essence, but also time here is strange. This, this place is in between. Years ago, when I was first night, my darling, I would have told you, but it was the very beginning and we did not understand it yet. I told Laren it should be me. She did not pressure me. She was my dearest friend, and I love her with all my heart. It was the role of a first knight to journey into danger. Laren explained her vision to me, the, the, the astral lay right. Aeor, 
opposed the gods and the matron of ravens and her ascension, and Laren's vision was, from whence do the gods come? By what token do they award themselves that title, and what realms beyond could we explore? It was a beautiful dream, and I knew that there was danger, and I wanted her dream to come true. She sent me here, and I was protected, or so I thought, and I was protected here, but when I returned, the, we didn't understand the tree. We didn't understand the calyx. And in Sorry, I just legit um, enthralled right now. Um, but yeah, that is a good question, though. Obviously, I, I already knew Laren's whole thing was she wanted to see different realities and again, see where they, the gods came from and stuff like that. And he has a point, like, to the gods, they just came to Exandria and, you know, bestowed themselves gods and give powers to other people. But realistically speaking, they could have left from a planet where, yeah, they are extraordinarily powerful, but maybe that's just the norm for their planet. And going out and, you know, someone that is able to create life and is so immensely powerful, people will revere as a god. But that doesn't necessarily make that they didn't create the universe and what have you. They're not that version of a god, if you know what I mean. So, I mean, again, bringing it back anecdotally to a freaking an anime that I watch uh, or have watched. Uh, I can't remember what it is. Something Boonies, um, something from the town Boonies. I can't remember the full name of the anime. It was a long time that I watched it, but basically, there's this village where there is a bunch of like really overpowered people. And this kid leaves the village and goes to like an academy and a school and stuff like that. And he's the weakest in his village, but everywhere else he is super, super, super overpowered, even being the weakest in his village. That could be the same here. These so called gods could be like outcasts, uh, kind of like Venom, you know, how Venom's like weak uh, in terms of like other symbiotes and stuff like that. Uh, but obviously super powered in our world could be the same thing they could be super weak where they come from but but not super weak but you know weaker than a lot of other things where they come from but be overpowered everywhere else intentionally so the druids did not trust us with that knowledge and truth be told the tree didn't kill me it's safe when I was moved out here, I became anchored to this other realm. You can see that I don't look like I did. Don't. The tree did not kill me. Exandria was killing me. I was a foreign thing. I was not of that world. The tree was pushing me back out into the astral. That's why I started to vanish. The tree was trying to return something that it was protecting the world from. Oh. And if I had the ability to communicate past this, I would have, and her vision was not the simple magic of the threshold crests, not a quick move, not a one-way trip not a single destination, but truly to take a ley line off of the face of Exandria and chart it to the stars that we could go wherever we wished and be whatever we wished. And we didn't know the spell that the tree was writing. We just didn't know. It's safe here. Well, safe, I suppose. I'm not quite alive or, I mean, I'm alive. I'm just from somewhere else than where I'm actually from. And, uh, Evandrin, our son is still there. How do I, Elias is still. He's still there. He's still in Kath Moira. Get him here. We could live here. I don't know. I don't. 
How? Why are you here if, if Laren didn't send you? I don't know. I'm here. Thrixis, tell me the truth. Why are you here right now? I look around me, I look down, I try to see any sort of uh, remnants of what just happened in that room. Behind you, you see the mace. You're a spirit. You may tarry here for some time, but you are moving on. So he's only got a short amount of time to pick what he wants to do. I failed. I fell. And now I'm here. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no, no. I don't know for how much longer, but I feel a pull to another place. Well, wait. Evandrin. Wait. There's a way around this that we'll, we can just be clever. Let's just figure something out. I haven't been able to find a way back, but now there's two of us here, and we'll find a way. We'll find a way. You know I can't stay here. I look at the maze. All right. All right, you move on to the... If you move on to the afterlife, We'll find a way to resurrect you. I need to find a clever Wait, way Evandrin. to get back Evandrin, to save stop, Elias. Stop. And if I save yes, Elias, save Elias, save him. Uh, I, I just I, I don't know how to get back to the world. I haven't been able to find a way for years, but, but I'll. Uh, do I still have a connection to Tempest? You do in your, I think, I think post death. No. No, I don't, and I'm not in the same plane. I don't think that. Works. Um, you see the mace behind you on the ground. Temptation I, to uh, take that mace and... But, I can't help but turn back and look at it. What happens if he takes the mace? The uh, I had no idea that the life of the first night in that tower would be so lonely. I failed you, no. and I made it lonely. No, no. I should have been a cleverer spell sword than I am, because I know how special you are. Oh, Evangel seems like such a nice you guy. tapped into something deep and profound. When I saw you for that moment, there have been times where I could see through Tempest's eyes, and I saw you wield that power earlier this night. <clears throat> there is a place beyond the stars that your heart alone can reach, and I have known it of you since the first day we met. Is that where you want me to go? Is that where you think my place is? Yes. You. And you see here, Evandrin looks at the mace and narrows his eyes. He doesn't like what he sees there. Sorry, Jesus. I don't know if you can hear that banging, but I do apologize if you can. Yes. You can go. If you have been struck down, if you have been killed, then we will find a way. We will find a way. There are yes. there are resurrections. We will find a way. Evander, listen to me. Okay. I believe in my heart that you will find a way. I know you will. But you know me. And I know what I believe is true. And I will never give up. The age of Arcanum is dead. What comes next? 
and we'll leave that question for the next episode. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but time's really getting on and I'm not going to bore you with the rendering thing again. Well, very rarely am I lost for words. Yes, I get lost in the story, but that's usually because I'm just trying to digest all of the information that's going on, especially in episode four. There has been a metric ton of stuff dumped on us. And, but my God, that, that episode, man, I went from being devastated that, you know, characters are dying to hard hitting parental thing. There was somebody commented a while ago as well. I can't remember which episode it was that um, me being a dad, there are certain things that happen with like the kids and stuff that I'll probably connect with, uh, you know, obviously having a child of my own. I don't know if it was that specific thing that they were referring to or if there's more stuff that's going to happen with Evandrin and Xerxes's child uh but god damn it man that shit hit freaking hard uh, and I just I don't know where it's going to go from here I don't know what Xerxes is going to do I genuinely don't I don't know if he's going to join them uh well I say join them as in I like, take the the sword and I assume him doing that will bring him back but Probably not as himself, it'll probably be as like an avatar of the god of death as the father of lies. Or is he going to do what Evandrin's asking him, what he thinks is right, and he's going to move on in hopes that Evandrin can escape and find a way to resurrect them? I don't know, man. I want a happy ending, I really do, but I don't know what's going to happen. The only light-hearted moment in this one was when, fucking ironically, when uh, Loquacious was dying and Sam decided to be like, yeah, I'm, as I'm dying, I just want my dicks to just start forming into different kind of dicks. That was the only saving grace of this episode. The rest of it was so hard-hitting, man. Jesus Christ. But we're like two hours into it, into the whole thing. Uh, and there's, there's still like, I can't remember if it's four hours or six hours, but there's still quite... A, quite a few hours left and then we'll have the whole wrap-up party which I will be watching by the way just in case anybody was wondering I've had a few comments of people asking but yes we are going to be watching the wrap-up party so uh hopefully you guys are looking forward to that but yes <laughs> I'm gonna end the episode here um end the video here if you enjoyed it please do leave a like comment and subscribe share the video around um you can cry along with me because my god uh yeah it's been fun guys <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it and I will uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.